Baptist, the school that we are, I'm standing in right now, was uh, co-founded by four key people who were landowners here in the um, Franconia area. And of course, uh, Will Jasper uh, deeded a half acre of land so we can build. And um, the co-founders was my great-grandfather, uh, Thornton Gray. And Thornton Gray was a freed slave on George Washington's plantation. And his mother's name was Thomasine Gray. And she was emancipated after the war by uh, General George Washington. They said the most important thing is to educate our children. And so they decided to build and create a school. And basically, the first students were their own children. The people in the communities they saw the disparity between uh, African Americans and, let's say, white students. Um, the white students had, you know, schools, not a one-room school. A lot of times they had more than one room. So once they were able to basically be able to read legally, they wanted the, the, their children to be able to sit in the classroom and actually be taught, especially the basics or the fundamentals of like reading and writing and math, because they didn't have it, but they wanted their children to have it. So they all pitched in together. You know, they would even bring fruits and vegetables, but they would have um, a stew that they would actually uh, prepare for the students right here at the school. So it was more like a, a sense of community because everybody pitched in. They never had a problem, let's say behavior, because they were so excited about getting an education. So it was almost like an honor to be in the classrooms. They all mentioned, every student who ever attended said that it was so endearing because one, it got them away from um, some of the things that was happening in the area because believe it or not, even um, we might have not experienced because this was a small school, but some of the largest schools that were established at that time was being plagued by the KKK and a lot of uh, obstructions. They were just determined to just make um, the best of you know a difficult situation, especially when they had the opportunity to educate the um, the classes. Yes, we can say it's easy now, but to struggle through what they had to go through, especially when, you know, just was right after Reconstruction and they had so many Jim Crow laws. Even though this one-room school just included the first grade up to the seventh grade, they did not have any opportunity to have higher education, like going to high school, because it was illegal for them to go to high school. So the only students who got a higher education, higher than the seventh grade, were students who were able to catch a train and go to the District of Columbia. If they had not done this in 1881, it would not have happened. We do have like a, a official marker out front which uh, they recognize the historic aspect of the uh, Law Grove School. And um, it's one of the last remaining one-room schools in Northern Virginia, which is, um, we take pride in restoring this particular uh, facility. It's heartwarming for me because of, you know, my parents and my grandparents and great-grandparents were part of this. And so um, to recognize it and not to just, you know, take it for granted as a, a living, museum in a sense to let people be aware of the struggles that um, these are individuals who were determined to get an education to have a better life.